Good morning. My name is John Martin from Toko Music Mex, and I have the distinct pleasure today to talk with our very first artist, Hela San. She's out of Guadalajara. Could you please introduce yourself, Hela? Hi, John. I'm Hela San, and I'm so happy to be here talking to you today. I'm excited as well. I'm excited as well. Um, obviously, when you're talking with people about what drew them into the industry, I'm sure you have your own story. What inspired you to pursue a career in music. I mean, is that what you do totally all the time? Or is this something that you do kind of as um, you're doing it in addition to something else? Well, I I grew up uh, in a family of musicians. So I, I know you have to take music very seriously. And that's something life changing that they taught me. But I didn't really decide to, to get into it professionally until I was a bit older. Um, I always had music in my life. It was like a natural thing for me. I always sung and, and wrote songs. And uh, I loved it, but I, I, I didn't really think of it as, as something like I, I, I had to do for a living, you know? Right. It was something like on the side for me. But I think I was around 19 or 20 years old when I, I, I realized that I needed to do that in order to be happy. It, it was something you needed, that it was something that, that strong, yeah. that was uh, that strong of a draw was that you needed yeah. to do. Oh, ah, okay. I, I was, at, at the time I was studying something else. I decided to study uh, filmmaking, but it wasn't really something for me. I mean, I was, I was kind of lost really. Mm -hmm. But um, when I decided to, to do it like more seriously, I moved to Mexico City mm -hmm. to study music in a, in a theory school. And um, there it was it was like a really defining thing for me because I, I started to meet musicians, uh, very brilliant musicians from from the Mexico City scene, jazz mm -hmm. scene. Okay. Mostly, and I started to sing jazz, and I I began to discover my 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 voice, the, the way I wanted to do things, the music I wanted to make, mm -hmm. and that's how I started. I I really never thought of myself as participating in the industry, but I I guess I sort of do. <laughs> um, but I do think of myself as mainly a singer and a songwriter that's that's my identity that's who I am and okay. I do other things uh, for a living because you know it's hard to <laughs> to live from music sure, uh, sure. only but mm -hmm. um but it, it it's always been related mm -hmm. I love uh working in in productions and show uh productions and cultural festivals but but what really what I think what my life is about is music it's all it's always been music yeah that's awesome yeah it's, it's interesting that you said you needed to do it and I feel like sometimes when you're an artist you feel that it's it's more than hey I wish I could do that it's more of like I've got to express myself this way and it, did you feel so that was about 18 19 years old for you is that kind of where that started to just kind of take over your your mind a little bit or take over the way that you created what yeah. was the first what was the first uh instrument that you actually that you started kind of trying it out on like to get that out of your mind out of your soul it was, <laughs> it was my voice always always singing uh -huh. um, yeah i I tried to play guitar. I don't really. It, it, it's always been really hard for me. But then I, my dad had a piano in his, mm -hmm. in his house. And uh, I used to sit on the piano and try to play it. But I got really frustrated because I didn't know anything. And I, mm -hmm. I couldn't play the things that I heard in my head. So I got really frustrated. And I, I, I never tried it. Like, I, I never, I, I wasn't. Like, you know, I, I learned to play piano by myself. No, I didn't. Yeah. I had to, I had to go to a proper Take lessons. school too. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it was always singing for me and writing songs. Mm 
Mm-hmm. I wanted to write songs, but the songs that came out, I didn't like them much. I, I thought like they were, they didn't, they didn't say anything about me. Right. And yeah. That, that's interesting. Cause like uh, when you wrote the songs, just a, just a, like a personal thing, when you wrote the songs, did you already have the melody in your head? Like, did you already, did you kind of already hear what the sound should accompany with the words that you were writing? Yeah. You yeah, did. I did. I, I, I listened to a lot of music, mm-hmm. uh, mostly pop music. That's yeah. what I liked in my teens. Um, but the things that came out, they they didn't really sound like me. They sounded like everything I was listening to. So they didn't have like a signature, you know? Right. Um, and I didn't like those songs, but I knew that I liked writing songs. Mm-hmm. So I... I kept on doing that and um I when I started singing jazz it was before I moved to Mexico City I I knew there was something in it that that made me feel different that mm-hmm. made me feel more like a singer mm-hmm. like I I was doing something different than just singing songs I was right. I was giving the songs like something from me you know mm-hmm. I was putting myself into those songs and um so that's when I started to take it more seriously. Mm-hmm. And when I decided that I wanted to do that for the rest of my life, I, I didn't know what it meant really. Right, right, right. Yeah. It but I, I knew that it was something that I had to try. And, you know, my mom's a singer. So when I told her, I want to quit school and I want to, <laughs> I want to study music and I want to do this for a living. And she was like, okay, do you know how hard it is? Do you know what does it mean? Do you know? Mm-hmm. It's it's really serious business, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and I can help you, but it's not going to be easy. And I was like, okay, okay I, have, I have to try it. And it's been like that since then. I mean, she's been my my main teacher, not in, in music and singing, but in how to devote your life to that, how yeah. to, to make a career in music. And... Yeah, well, it, it it's not been easy, but as you said, it's something that I need to do. It's right. it's what I'm good at, so I mm-hmm. have to, I have to keep on doing that. Yeah, you know, um, did your my, you know when I talk with uh, different people, I think a lot of times the encouragement that either happens or doesn't happen <laughs> can kind of do you know direct the way that you go in life. So your mom never said no, you can't do it. No. She always said, you can do it, it's going to be hard, but I'm not going to tell you you can't do it, right? Is that basically, I'm sure there was more to it, but that was the main kind of motivation for you to start taking it to the next step was your mom saying, hey, you can do this, Helen. Yeah, she, but she was very serious in saying that if you do this, you're going to do this right. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're you're really going to do this and you're going to take it seriously and you're I mean, I she knew that I saw you can make it for a living. I mean, y- you can you can really devote your life to music, uh-huh. but but it's not like a hobby. It's not it it's not um sophisticated. Mm-hmm. It's hard yeah. and it's a commitment. So she knew that I knew that because I saw that every day in, in them. So she couldn't tell me no, you can't do this. Mm-hmm. But she could tell me this is something serious. This is a career and you're going to have to sacrifice things and yeah. you're going to have to work a lot because mm-hmm. it's not easy. And yeah. I, I remember she said it can make things easier for you that you have uh, you have me as your mom, but it can make also make things more difficult because, you know, there's expectations. There's, there's expectations. expectations. Yeah. 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 That's a huge. I mean, everybody that <laughs> I can't imagine, you know, having um, a mom that's already done that and then almost feeling like you need to level up to that level (laughs) or even a little bit better to be your own person. That's a huge amount of pressure. I mean, is that kind of did you feel pressure from this or did it was it more of a challenge? I definitely felt pressure. And I think that's why I moved away. Ah, okay. Because I, I needed to make my own path. I, I didn't want to follow her steps because she's really well known here and well and all over Mexico, but but mostly here 
it's a small city, you know, so yeah. I would always be the daughter of, and I, I didn't want that. So I mm-hmm. moved away and I, I made my own thing. And then I came back knowing who I am. So it was, exactly. I think it was better. Now I can, I can really make profit from, from being my parents' daughter. Being you. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, and it's interesting you said, so, so your father was a musician and your mother was a singer. Yeah. So you, it's almost like, and this is just my opinion. It's almost, it's difficult. I think if you're growing up around music and I did too, my brother was a, was a vocalist. Uh, I was a vocalist. My sister was a vocalist, went to school for the same thing. So like you're around it so much that you get this different view that everybody just must understand music like I understand music. And that's not true. I mean, there's so many people that just, they hear what things that you do, the way that you play, the way that you sing. And they're just like, how does she do that? But but it was a need, it was a desire. And I that's, I guess, kind of segues into the next question, which is really, you know, how do you approach a creative? Let's say that you get this in your mind, you're thinking, huh, I've got an idea for a song. And you hear this this melody, you start thinking of words. What is the creative process for Hellasan? Oh, um, is it different sometimes? Other than yeah. you know, okay, it's it's different. It's it doesn't always work the same way. And you can think of it like uh, the the romantic way that you put it. Like, oh, I, I've got this idea, and then I'm gonna put music to it, or I'm gonna put words words to it. But it doesn't work like like that for me. <laughs> um, okay. I have I have to get myself to sit down and. Because it's really hard for me uh, doing everything I do in my life and and being like uh, sucked into this, um, in, into the things I have to do, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not always thinking about songs. I'm not always thinking ideas. So sure. I really have to get myself to work, like sit down in the piano and um, open my notebook and start pulling things out uh-huh. they they don't usually come out on their own I okay. have to I have to set the ground for it mm-hmm. and so I, I usually it, it does happen that a, an idea pops in my head and and I okay there's something in it and and I'm, I'm gonna try to develop it sometimes it when I sit down it can take hours for a a glimpse of an idea to come out (laughs) and sometimes it can take minutes and I I write a whole song like from start to finish in -hmm. a couple of hours wow it's never easy because I I try uh for for a few years now I've been trying to really commit to make to make songs that that have the the lyrics are there for a reason Mm -hmm. there are no no extra words that don't that just are just filling in you know because they rhyme yeah yeah just no no, no. they, they just, have yeah. to they have to mean something to me right. and the the melody has to be there for a reason it has to make sense yeah so uh i'm always like uh getting frustrated and spending hours and i i don't like this phrase i don't like this word this is not right this is not saying the things that i want to say but what comes out of that is a really strong song that right. really taps into something deep of myself mm-hmm. and and that i really like that i i really uh connect to but mm-hmm. I, i'm not like this songwriters that make a song a day <laughs> I, right, I, right 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 <laughs> exactly it's not an easy process you have to work through yeah. it yeah yeah and i have to be alone that that's something that makes it hard sometimes i have to be alone i've never been able to to compose with someone else mm-hmm. i have to be alone for for amount of time you know for some hours and sit down and and really really get into this state like and to open myself up Mm-hmm. And it's not easy for me, but because then. But what I is that? To... What is the steps for that? Like what? Like is it? Is it just something where you just basically put some noise canceling earphones on? You sit down at a table hmm. and you're like, "This is gonna happen right now," or is it? What? What is the? What is like the? How do you find that space? I guess. What? How do you find your creative space? Um, I have to to be sitting down at the piano. Uh huh. 
and with with a drink, something, a tea, a coffee, or something, uh -huh. or a stronger thing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I I usually start by playing things like just mm -hmm. playing some chords and, and trying to find something that I like. It usually starts with with music, with just chords or a progression or a melody or something. And I I always have poetry books on on my piano. Mm -hmm. So I usually grab them. I have some right here. I, I usually um, grab something and I, I, I open it and I start like reading, not not really reading the poem, but just trying to take some words out. Sure. And then it usually there's usually a word that that stands out, something mm -hmm. that, oh, that that means something that mm -hmm. connects with something that's in my head. So I, I have my my notebook there and. I start writing ideas like what do I want to to talk about? Mm -hmm. I want to talk about what's going on with myself right now, or I want to talk about a dream I had or a movie that I saw, and um, and I start pulling out ideas and writing down, and and suddenly I may uh, I may say okay, that's the first line, that's mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. or maybe no, it's all rubbish that doesn't work and <laughs> Do start water it up and yeah. throw it over. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. so it's really like a trial and error uh, mm -hmm. okay this doesn't work okay then i'm gonna shut the piano and i i'm gonna read Walk something away. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. no mm -hmm. it was it, you you touched on something that's very interesting and and you're the second person like um that's mentioned it probably within the last month and and james cameron did a a thing um called the my my daughter was in it as well um, we we went up to Puebla and there was the Festival de las Ideas 2023. Mm -hmm. And James Cameron was talking about dreams and how that creatives, oftentimes that's your brain saying, hey, idiot, pick up the book. You need to write this down, you know, wakes <laughs> you up at three o'clock in the morning, you know, that whole thing. And and he was saying, though, that dreams are super important because when you're going over, what, how, why, why do I remember this dream? And you're going over it and going over it and you're telling somebody about it. And they go, well, that sounds like, a, you know, he was he was talking about his process, creative process for uh, Terminator. And he said that he had a dream. There was fire and there was this like chromey looking thing walking out of the fire with with skin burning off of it. Mm -hmm. And he talked to a friend about it and, who's also a creative and his friend said, oh, that sounds like a robot. And so he's like, yeah, that's that's what it sounds like. It sounds like a robot uh, that used to look like a human being. And so his process was step by step by step, but keeping it in his head, constantly going over it. And then kind of like bouncing it off of like what you do with your poetry books. He would do that with fellow creators yeah. and basically say, what does it sound like to you? I mean, I'm like really having a hard time putting all the puzzle pieces together and everything starts with a dream, you know, and that's a very interesting, uh, inter interesting thing because we all have dreams. So like, it almost seems like a dream, maybe the seed to a really good idea, but if we never do anything with it, it just kind of, it becomes a dream and that's it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't ever become a reality. Um, more so, I would like to kind of, if we can shift over to asking you about, you've already talked about your, your mother and how, and your father and how it kind of influenced your musical career. But you said that, that jazz kind of spoke to you. Who are some of your musical influences that have inspired you? Like before you really started composing, writing, performing, who were some of these people that that Hella was listening to when she was in her teenage years? Other than you said pop, I know that, but I mean, as far as like specific names, do you have anybody that just really stood out? Yeah, I think when I when I started to um, to listen to music more from a from a personal like from a personal mm -hmm. choice, not just listening to what everybody was listening to and just the radio right. stuff and, you know, just like by choice. Mm -hmm. um, well, I inherited some of my parents' uh, tastes in music. Um, sure. I really, yeah. I've always loved the Beatles. Ah, okay. And that's something that stuck with me since I was, I, I don't know, 
probably 18 or 17 or something. Mm -hmm. I, at first I hated them. And then I, <laughs> I, I realized that they're great. And, and then um, they've stuck with me and I always listen to them from time to time. And, uh, but I always, I've always um, leaned more into female vocalists mm -hmm. and songwriters. So I really, I, I love Joni Mitchell. I love Carol uh -huh. King. And, but I think the one that made something in my head like shift and, and realized that I could do something that was very unique and very me was mm -hmm. Fiona Apple. Ah, interesting. Yeah. I, I, I listened to her. I was very young and I, I don't know, someone showed me a song or a video mm -hmm. and, MTV time, you know, she was really big in, in MTV. Yeah. And um, I really liked it. And I became like a diehard fan, mm -hmm. totally. And I I think she has influenced the way that I make songs, not because my songs sound like her, no, but the mm -hmm. way that I say things. I really like how she says things. Right. And um, the melodies and the piano, because she's always a pianist. She's also a pianist. So um, I I don't know. I saw something in her that mm -hmm. that gave just resonated. Me strength, yeah. you know? Kind of resonated yeah. with your with your soul, I guess. I mean, I, yes. I, I was I was that way um, when I first heard Pearl Jam 10 mm -hmm. and it just like it was so completely um and then, of course, it moved into Nirvana and kind of that whole grunge scene, Soundgarden, Kurt Cornell. I mean, yeah. I kind of just, everybody was listening to Motley Crue. Everybody was, I mean, I was more of a rocker, you know, but like they just completely flipped the script on everybody, you know, and made some some sounds with the down tuning and, and the things like that that just totally opened my ears to a different way to listen to things and to kind of, under, you know, trying to figure out what black meant, you know, um, you know, listening to Jeremy and going, holy crap, that's like, you know, because I wasn't the most popular kid. So, I mean, like it <laughs> resonated with me, you know, to, yeah. to see just being ignored, you know, so I can definitely almost like remember the smells, what I was doing when I was listening to it, you know, the whole, all five senses are permanently etched in my brain. So I can totally understand what you're saying about, you know, how Fiona Apple just basically goes, bloop, okay, I'm in your head. Yeah. You know, this is this is something that you really like, enjoy, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, so how do you, it sounds like you're busy, right? So I'm assuming that music is not your full-time thing. Are you a mother? Are you, do you have children? How is, how are you able to balance the creation of music because you said you have to have a quiet spot <laughs> I, <laughs> I have never had a quiet spot as long as my kids were little how do you balance that how do you balance the amount of time that you set aside for the creative process to be, continue to feed your soul to continue to feed that need to create but also to be able to nurture to you know to take care of the of your children how do you balance that yeah, it's it's quite a challenge. I am a mother, and um, as you say, it's not easy to have a quiet moment yeah, or a quiet spot in my house. Yeah, and it gets a lot of planning mm -hmm. to make that happen. Um, I live with my husband and my eight-year-old daughter, and um, it's been a challenge because you can. Um, you can get sucked up into into everyday life. Yeah. And sometimes I forget how important music is for me to 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 keep being who I am and to right. just to be happy. Mm -hmm. Because I enjoy other things. I enjoy my family. I enjoy reading. I enjoy just listening to music and going out and nature. Mm -hmm. But I also need to sing. I right. need to to write songs. I need to have my space, my time, because if I don't, I just get depressed. It just mm -hmm. it always happens. I start 
I start being moody and I, I, I don't feel good with myself. And, and right. I realize, okay, so I haven't sit down at the piano in, in a month. In a week, or, a month. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, and it's really sad because it's mm -hmm. such a, an important part of me. And I want my daughter to see that. I want right. her to know that that we we as human beings need to to nurture that this part of ourselves right. and and to see that i i i also have a professional life mm -hmm. and but it, it's it's difficult because i'm not i'm not an employed in an office where i have to to go every day and, and that just sure. like sets my schedule it's I not have a set times schedule. it's not nine to five in the afternoon yeah and you can't like, uh, although I, i've done that i've done that and uh -huh. it's, it's definitely not for me but I also I, I work with other people I work in, in big productions I love um, I love festivals I love shows um, I love theater I love dance so um, I, I usually work in big productions mm -hmm. from time to time some months of the year and the rest of the time I'm at home trying to make this work trying right. to 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 balance between my family and cooking and writing and 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 living also living because exactly. that's an important and a very important part of the creative process mm -hmm. if i if i don't live if i don't um immerse myself in what's going on with the world if i don't look around at, at other people and what's what's happening here and what's happening far away and what mm -hmm. are my feelings about it i don't have anything to write about so yeah. I, I i i love to travel i need to see other things i need to 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 go to the movies and in order to have something in my head to write about right. to, to, to inspire yeah. yeah you know it's basically you know if you just basically only work 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 and you never flex that creative muscle you get rusty I mean yeah. it's it's with anything with drawing with playing an instrument you don't play it for a while you're not as good as if you're constantly setting aside time for it you Definitely. know um so this may be personal to ask you, but like if you're saying that you'd like to try and make sure that you're staying present in the moment, was that ever, did, did your mother and your father basically give you that blueprint of how to be a creative, but also spend the amount of time to, to be able to do those things? Was that ever something that you looked at and you go, man, this is exactly, I need to do it like this. Or was it a situation that you saw how it was and you're like, I never want to do that with my own kid? You know what I mean? Like, was there any, was it one way or the other? And we can totally edit this out if this is not a question <laughs> that you'd like to answer. No, no, that's fine. Um, no, it definitely has something to it. Um, I really admire the way my mom did things. I mean, her parenting and mm -hmm. her music. I have no idea how she managed because <laughs> I mean, she had two children and she was totally devoted to music. I mean, that mm -hmm. was her thing. Passion. She, mm -hmm. she also painted and uh, I, I don't know how she did it. I don't know mm -hmm. how she managed to be the, the present mom that I always felt she was. Mm -hmm. but also to have a very successful career. I yeah. know it wasn't easy for her because well, it, it was a different time, definitely. Sure. Where she could she could really do music and, and have a, a label that did all the other stuff. And mm -hmm. yeah. she was independent, but not so much. And uh, she was able to build something from zero right. of her own and to make a lot of records, but I know it, it took a lot of effort. And I know yeah. while she was doing that, my dad was working mm -hmm. in an office doing things that he really liked and trying to also to balance between that and music and, and mm -hmm. being a dad. So I, I know from their example that you can do it, that yeah. that's, it's something that's, that can happen. Uh -huh. But also, I know that it takes a lot of sacrifice and a lot of work and maybe sleepless nights and maybe um, not not doing not being able to to get my career to happen in, in the fast pace that I would like to. Exactly. It, it yeah. Sometimes it can slow down. It, it definitely has to slow down when you're a parent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. The, the, the especially when they're young. 
and they just cling to you all the time it definitely yeah. is a difficult thing to okay honey go with that I need to you know I need to to be here I need to do this mm -hmm. and it's hard to kind of balance that you know where you remain present you're not missing the moments you're not missing like all these things but you also have this need you know so it's a juggling act for sure you know definitely um real quick um so you've you've performed um in live productions uh what is the most memorable one like can you think back over what you've done so far and think man this one sticks out this is the one that I felt so I'm so proud of I'm it's amazing do you have any of those moments as far as like live performances sure well I've performed in in big stages not huge ones maybe but but I've I felt that uh, that feeling of having a big audience in front of me, yeah, and it's it's amazing. I mean, the energy that can really build up there it it's really um, it's something that I feed from. Mm -hmm. uh, but I remember when I when I was in in the U.S. in Rochester in a small cafe with I don't know an audience of maybe 30, 40 people. Uh -huh. who had never heard my music they they were there because i don't know they were there it and was i was live there. music <laughs> yeah yeah and it was a, a cafe that usually had live music and mm -hmm. nobody knew me and i was a mexican like i've yeah, never yeah. been there and i started doing my thing it, it was just me and the piano and something happened they were all quiet they were like this amazing audience they were quiet they're something there was the, this connection that happened mm -hmm. and when I finished my set I just felt like this amazing joy like I just gave something of myself to them and they gave me something of themselves and mm -hmm. and, and it was it was life-changing that at that moment I knew that the music make made something happen the right. that my music although it was it could be in English or Spanish yeah didn't matter it, it's it a made universal the connection language. yeah it's a universal so, language so yeah it was really amazing and mm -hmm. I, I try to cling to that to to keep on doing this and not giving up yeah and you know you spoke a little bit about when you when you're in big crowds or you're getting feedback you know, um, that just kind of resonates with you. It's almost like we're all in the same moment at the same time. You know, is it like a switch? You know, it's, I mean, obviously there's the cold start, you know, and hello, yeah. my name is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm playing, I'd like to play something original for you. And everybody's like, oh, you know, there's this whole, <laughs> no, I want to hear the, blah, blah, blah. you know, they came for live music. But sometimes you just find that crowd and it sounds like it just, did you know like by song one did you know by song two when was it in that whole process where it just goes oh this is going to be special you know that i don't know i don't know i i can't really describe it but i start to feel it like mm. yeah it, it sometimes takes three or four songs to for me to really get into it right um i i really like to look at the crowd to look at people because i know there there's artists that can't even look at their the right, right, yeah. faces you know but i Light, love to only do that see the lights in their eyes because yeah. yeah sometimes you can i mean sometimes all, it's all a blur but yeah. i i love to see the faces and to try to feel what they're feeling and to to read their reactions and there's this moment when they're really looking at you and and you do something and they they go like Okay, that that just worked. That, <laughs> so that there, reaction. There was this reaction. moment between us. <laughs> so that feeds me. And then it, it's right. yeah, it's it's like a, a this virtuous circle that just mm -hmm. it feeds me. And so I'm able to do something different and they react back and it it's really amazing. It's magic. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that and that is the magic of music. I mean, you hear a lot of people that perform. And, you know, they may go on the stage and they're grumpy because of this <laughs> or that, and they start performing and it changes you. And that's creativity in general. I think that a lot of times the people that have that ability, um, you know, can really fight off bad vibes and everything like that by just picking up a pencil, a paper and drawing, 
You know, it just gets your head focused on something other than your problems. And, and I think that that's why people go out for live music is they've been working all week. You know, all they want to do is have like a wine or a beer and they just want to listen to somebody play you know? Yeah. And, and that's, to me is, is you're providing a service, you know, and it, you're providing an escape for people that don't otherwise, you know, I, I mean, they're obviously interacting with other people around them and stuff like that, but music can, it literally is different than memories. I mean, <laughs> I, like I said, with the Pearl Jam thing, I mean, I can remember the smells. I can remember the people that I was talking with their faces when I let them listen to it for the first time in the earphones, you know, all these senses, the sounds, the feelings of, you know, all those things are really tied to music. And I think that when you share that with other people, you know, you get that feedback from them. That's, that's quite amazing. I mean, it really is exactly what you said. It's magic. You know, you're, you're creating something, you're putting it out into the world and people are like, oh, that's exactly what I needed right now, you know? And that's, I think the difference between, you know, going to a show and just bombing, <laughs> you know, and then, and then the ones yeah. that really, really resonate with you, like this one that happened.